Hello friends, David Vos here, and I'm still here in Oklahoma, and it's a beautiful day. We have a lot of things to uh, tell you guys today. Hope you're having a wonderful day where you are. Um, Well, dealing with a bunch of stuff here, and have a lot of thoughts, and I feel like I'm getting a lot of uh, sort of downloads of information. Big things, big things are coming. Friends, we've got some very important things to reveal. There's a lot of revelation going on. A lot of people are beginning to wake up to a lot of very important things. And I think the Lord wants us to share these things because that's what he's giving us this information for. It's not, you know, knowledge is a tool and we need to have this information. We need to understand it properly. Okay, too, so that we're not confused or scared. Now, if something bad is going to happen, then we need to know about it. Okay, now it might be scary, but you see, it's better to know, and then we can decide if there's something we can do, what's the appropriate action. It's not good to go into anything blind. So, there's a lot of information in the Bible and in history and in and science. There's lots of information that we can use to understand what's about to happen because something's happening. So, I'm going to tell you about the moon today. I'm going to tell you about the dragon today. This is information that all of the world understood. Did you know that there were people in ancient times, all the ancient peoples talk about a time before the moon. There was a time before the moon, when the moon wasn't here. And there are people who, all around, all the legends talk about the great cataclysm flood. Well, that happened when the moon was brought here, and it says that a great dragon came and laid an egg, and it was the moon. And that's what the the people in Africa taught the ancient ones there and down in um, the ancient ones of the Mayans and the Aztecs talk about this. And, and, and the Chinese and all of the ancient ones talk about the coming of the dragon. Now, you probably remember we've talked about how Madame Blavatsky says that the moon is just a burnt out cinder it used to be the earth and because it's been so many millions of years uh since this new earth that we're living on here so that we could incarnate and have a better classroom appropriate for our learning we outgrew that other earth we go through seven of these and so moons then sometimes hang around or the old carcass and as time goes by, it develops a certain distance because though there is no time and space, the perception of it as something in the past appears in reality as though it's distance. And so we look at the moon and we see a lot of similarities to the earth. The dark spots on the moon that's facing the earth, which that side of the moon is always facing the earth, which is very peculiar. But that side seems to mimic continents. It, perhaps that was all full of water at one time and now the water's gone. Well, you see, so some of us wonder, who is this devil? I mean, if, the, if, if, if Jesus Christ is the sun, you know, he's the logos, the, the solar logos, and he's the one in charge of all of these lessons that we're going through, these classrooms, and how is it that it's degenerated into such a terrible situation with all this pain and suffering? Well, because that's the way life is. Butterflies come from cocoons. They used to be caterpillars. And then and more or less die and go into a cocoon and they bloom as something even greater and something better. You've got to have uh, like a, uh, a crab loses its shell a snake loses its skin. You're always developing and evolving and 
your suit gets it changes from time to time. You 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 evolve and get better. Well, sometimes there's a little bit of discomfort getting rid of the shell. The time of crisis, the end of the time or the days. Then you move into another age. Well, who then are these evil people? Who is this Yahweh? Well, this is the lower ego. Remember, he's his planet is Saturn, which is the, the, the planet, the seventh one at the bottom, down by the sexual organs. So when we lived there, we weren't the way we are now. We were not human as physical beings with thumbs, right, to create and and physical bodies running around planting and sowing and and uh, harvesting and loving and giving in marriage and having, you know, festivals and living. But we were different. We existed. It's been millions of years. We've gone through the mental, the elemental. Isn't that interesting? Because Mental is prior to the elemental. The elemental is a more physical. And we go through the mineral and we go through the animal or the plant kingdom. And we, we evolved all the way through these kingdoms. So, you see, we used to be the lower nature. Animals are very selfish. They're not bad, but that's their nature. That wild, ferocious lower nature is the pod or the the shell that we leave behind. And it it has a great uh there's almost it's almost like a when you put off the shell, it's like an awakening. But what happens when we awake? We have to be shaken to our foundations. And the physical part is removed. That's why the earth is reserved for fire, to burn up the physical, to cleanse the they put the the ore and the 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 rock into the fire and it's heated up and it's purified in the fire and the silver and the gold is purified and the dross is taken off so you see what we're doing is we're going through a time where we're getting rid of the old lower carnal forms and these demonic beings are angry Okay, and we're waking up to the realization they're being exposed and they're running like cockroaches. This is an experience that we're going through. Now, you've heard stories about this dragon. We, we, I'm going to give you a little clue. The dragon, of course, is, has seven heads and it's the seven planets. And so you remember there were there's there's talk about Nibiru, right? Well, if you go back to that story in the Sumerian legends, you, you find that Nibiru is something to do. I mean, if you read Valenkowski, right? Or uh, some of these writers that we've been, the chariots of the, Eric von Daniken, okay? We talk about a time when legends or history, it's not legend, the ancient history, history of the peoples of this world, they have their creation story. It means something. And they talk about a time that was a great cataclysm. There may not have been all seven of these planets. But something happened with Tiamat, who had a great battle. Tiamat is the seven-headed dragon. And something happened so that this great dragon laid this great egg and placed it here in our world. Now, I'm not going to get into it yet. We're going to... I have to tell you a couple of things. Some very interesting things. Because we're, we're now at the time of the end. And so, huh, the Bible tells you that the time is coming when the moon shall be turned into blood. And... I'm going to show you some verses. You know, the book of Revelation is about Babylon. It talks about a star that fell from heaven. It talks about the, the waters turning into blood. And it talks about a third of mankind having, being, you know, put to death because they wouldn't worship this beast. Okay, a beast is reflection, seven-headed beast, the reflection of the dragon. It's in the sea. And it comes up out of the sea. And we've talked about how the woman... 
is persecuted by this dragon, and then she is clothed with the sun, which is Christ and righteousness, but the moon, the law, beneath her feet. So the the moon's always been, scripturally, it's always had some connection to Yahweh. His law. It says in the Old Testament, Yahweh's always bragging and talking about his law is a lamp to your feet, that you need to follow his light. Well, it's a very vague little lampy light. It's not the bright sun. It's not the righteousness that's coming from Christ. But we were under a certain law. What is law? Well, law supposes that there is a government because law is foreign in nature. There are natural laws, but we don't, you know, that's what we call them, but they're not really laws. It's just the way it is. No one can make an edict that says, okay, there is now gravity. Okay, no. It's reality. It's not law. Okay, law is something different. Law is man-made or somebody has to impose it. It's unnatural. It is not real. It is not good because it is it restricts your freedom. The one thing that the children of the divine being has to have in order to be like the divine being, in order to be happy, is free. So, if Yahweh imposes his law, then the Bible then is saying that there was a time when we were without this moon, this law, this reflectory light. So we'll get into that here in a moment. But I have to tell you something. Some very strange times are here, friends. First of all, I want to let you guys know that I didn't do a video yesterday through no fault of my own. I was taken down. I got another strike. And they said that I couldn't um, do any more videos and that they were about to take my channel down permanently. So I was down. I couldn't do any videos. I contacted YouTube and said, what's going on? Right? I mean, I, I am doing, you know, everything I can to abide by your rules, which doesn't mean I agree with them. But, you know, I said, look, I've deleted videos. I've, look, here's what I'll do. I'm going to delete any political videos and anything that has to do with, you know, you know, okay, because I can't talk about it. Okay, we're now, we're now at the point where, okay, I get it. <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk about it. If so, I'm gone. Now, I can say, well, screw you. I got to do this. This is what I'm supposed to do, and I got to warn the people. Okay, but look, I'm not going to be here anymore. I'll be gone. And, you know, I think that, I really believe that the way this happened, I'll explain the way it happened. The Lord was helping me understand. He was, he was saying, look, he worked this out in such a way that I am able now to get a clearer picture. And, and, and the Lord is like saying, listen, this is what I want you to do. Just go ahead and don't talk about what they're saying not to talk about. Be very careful. Be very careful. And I'm going to keep you on here, Dave. I think that's what the Lord is saying to me. And anything that is more controversial or whatever else, you know, people can call. We can talk as friends. You guys can watch at my other location and we can deal with it that way. So I, I thought, man, it was over. I, I did a lot of praying and I was, you know, I, I, I almost got scared. But I remembered that, you know, this isn't, it's nothing to do with me. We're in the time of the end. And the Lord is going to do what he wants to do. And he's not going to be uh, thwarted, you know, in his efforts to get out the truth. And so if the Lord is happy with what I'm doing and wants me to do, and he has told me, and I believe that he has inspired me to, to share these, I think that it was uh, the Lord's plan that I was able to talk to you guys on this channel. 
and share with you what the Lord shares with me. And I felt confident, and I've always felt this is the Lord's plan that I do this. And so I had a calm come over me. I really didn't, I wasn't, all of a sudden, I wasn't scared at all. And I just put it on the Lord. I didn't worry about it, and I didn't have any anxiety over it. I just put it in the Lord's hand, and I appealed their decision. And, you know, this is the craziest thing. This has never happened before. Usually when I appeal something, it takes days, days, sometimes weeks or months. And they usually don't ever go back on something like this. So, by the end of the day, I almost didn't even see it. I went to my mail and they had said, we made a mistake. We're going to reinstate you and now you can make videos and so forth. So, here I am, guys. So, suffice it to say, we are not going to be mentioning certain things on this channel. When I do videos that are more, you know, controversial, I'm not allowed to put them on this particular forum. So, I'm, I also want to tell you guys that, you know, I, I, I didn't get that place in Kansas. Now I'm still looking and I haven't made an offer on any other place. I'm just not feeling it, right? I'm trying to find a little place where I'm not right in town and I can have a little property and, you know, uh, a, a, a decent place where I can just ride this thing out. So I'm still looking for for, the, uh, for a place. Turns out that the uh, that house you couldn't they wouldn't give it an FHA loan and stuff. And I'm getting that because of my daughter's help because she has this really good credit and she's helping me to get this place. But anyway, I'm still looking. And uh, at this point, I have just come to a place again where I just feel like I put it in the Lord's hands. I'm not uh, really panicked or worried about where I'm going to go. I'm still staying here in my camper because of the situation we talked about with my place. But as I'm sitting here in sort of unusual circumstances and, you know, everything's kind of up in the air and I don't really know what's going on and the world's getting crazier, we just found out that now, I have to be careful what we talk about. I don't want to get into too much politics or anything. I'm not going to give you my opinion on it. Okay, you guys, I'm just going to tell you what I I heard is happening. Maybe you don't know. Aside from what's going on in Australia, they're literally locking everyone down. They can't go out of their house without putting on the, you know, the stuff, the paraphernalia. And they're being arrested. Okay, this is going on in different places. Well... Here in the United States, I don't know if you guys realize it, you know, in the darkness of night, <laughs> probably about a few days ago, they started running through this bill through our Congress. The bill is an infrastructure bill that I think, at one point I heard it was a trillion dollars, and I thought, oh my goodness, it's insane. But then it turns out, no, that's not right. It's actually, it may be 3.5 trillion. See, the problem is, is that we don't have any kind of money like that. This is a total fraud. Now, the only reason they would be doing this is because they know that the collapse is imminent and that money doesn't matter. They have no intentions of keeping us uh, financially stable. They know that the system is going to go through a reset and they don't care about money. But they're going to use all of our tax money and a big orgy to do what? Well, I guess after we all aren't here anymore because of the great famines and earthquakes and wars and stuff that they, shall we say, is coming for whatever reason. They'll have the infrastructure and they'll, they're going to live here, I guess, with nice roads and bridges. I don't know. Because I'm going to show you some things here. We, we were talking about there with the moon and the Bible. And I'm going to show you a couple of scriptures that, you know, we were talking about the book of Revelation. Um, the last couple of videos and stuff, we've been talking about it. And we've gotten a lot of information about what's about to happen. But I'm going to give you 
share some information with you today about what's going to happen according to the scriptures, according to all the ancient esoteric wisdom, the ancient ones and their prophecies, and the Bible itself, in no uncertain terms, it will blow your mind. Because we've got to put, a lot of times we hear all these things that are going to happen, and it's all disconjointed. Well, in this verse it says the stars will fall. In that verse it says that the earth's burnt up. And this one over here it says the people are going to die. And over here it's famine. And boy, when you put all this together, it don't look good. Okay, but there's another one. And I'll just tell you right at this juncture, in case I, <laughs> if I don't say it now, I might forget it. But you know that little place there in, in that little ditty there in Matthew 24 where Jesus describes the end times of the whole book of Revelation. The entire book of Revelation is described in one chapter, Matthew 24. It's also in Luke 21. And in that, we've talked about it many times, Jesus says that the first thing that's going to happen, because they asked him, when's going to be your coming, your parousia, your presence upon earth? When are we all going to wake up and it's going to be the end of the age and the end of the world? Well, Jesus said the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to see Antichrist. Don't believe him. The second thing is going to be war. Then famine. And pestilence. And then he mentions earthquakes. We've talked about this many times. This parallels exactly the book of Revelation, except the one thing that always puzzled me, you know, the four horsemen, you know, war, famine, pestilence. The first one's a white horse. It's Antichrist. But the thing that always bothered me is why did Jesus specifically mention amongst the four things? The last thing he mentions is earthquakes. Look, I have no doubt that that would be an appropriate thing for the great day of the end of the world, right? Of course, <laughs> along with famines and, and pestilence, we've got to have earthquakes, right? Oh, sure, okay. But why just earth? Why didn't he say storms? Why didn't he say fires? Why didn't he say... uh? Something else. Because the book of Revelation is talking about stars falling and mountains crumbling and the sea turning into blood. But Jesus says just earthquakes. You know, war, famine, pestilence, and earthquakes. Those are the four or the five. And I've always thought, I wonder why earthquakes? I mean, it's up to the Lord, right? Or I guess, <laughs> or the devil, whoever's doing all this destruction. And I suppose if the devil's going to do all this stuff, the Lord knows about it because that's why he's got prophecy. Why then do they specifically put at the forefront earthquakes. Well, it just hit me to go look that word up, <laughs> you know, to see the exact meaning. And, I, and, I, and I'm looking at this word, seismo. I'm like, well, sure enough, seismo, that's the same word we use today about for earthquakes, you know. Um, but then I got to think, wait a minute. A lot of words are Greek words that, that we still use in English today for something. Like, we, you know, we were talking about... Uh, Oh, I don't know. Um, you know, crises, which is translated judgment, but we still have the word crisis, where we got to have a turning point, make a decision, and lots of different words. You know, cosmo, like which means the you know like we got cosmonauts, you know, and the cosmos and stuff, and, and so it means the whole system, or the whole world, the whole universe, or the whole arrangement of the physical material world. Or logos, we said we got the word logic. We've got the word logo, which stems from that original root. And we were talking about ecclesia having relation to ek lagia or ecclesia, which ecclesia is just another spelling of ek lagia, which is the ones who are the speakers and they're speaking out. We talked about that. So all of these words, they're related. They're little images and groups of words that all have the same root. Sin and all these other words we talked about. Well, so seismo may have originally meant something that today we use in the earthquake business, right? When we're talking about earthquake. Well, it's seismo. Why do we use the word seismo today for earthquakes? Because the word just means shaking. To be shaken out of its place. To be shook up. So now... Put that word in there. When Jesus said there's going to be Antichrist, war, famine, pestilence, and shaking. What is he talking about? Ah, fits better, doesn't it? Because the book of Revelation talks about the great shaking. And I'm going to show you 
in the book of Joel and different places like in Isaiah, where this shaking is described in detail. It says the earth will be turned upside down and it will be moved out of its place. Now, we're going to show that this is literal. Because along with this, before the great and fear-inspiring day of the Yahweh, which will be darkness and not light, the day of vengeance of Yahweh, it says before that, the stars shall fall. That's what this book says in the book of Revelation. Not give their light. Well, one place it says the moon shall not shine, and then another place it says it will be turned into blood. And I believe the word blood has reference to death. See, the law has come to a place now where Yahweh's government is going to try and Okay, we better not say too much. You know, it's death. Okay, it's, 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 remember, it's a bondage and a curse, the Apostle Paul says. And it's the time of judgment because people wouldn't keep his law. So he's coming in his wrath. So this is why I'm, we're going to talk about the moon and the law and why it, what it means to be turned into blood. And the woman finally being crowned with all of the 12 stars, meaning she's, the restoration is taking place. They're, the remnant have achieved salvation. They're clothed with the sun, but the moon, it's been defeated. But that happens, and boom, it's over. Then Christ comes back on the clouds of heaven, and the resurrection, and all these things. But, so we'll get into that here in a minute. But, you know, right now, in the world, the anxiety and the angst and the fear and the intimidation and the wondering in our, all of our minds when the hammer is going to drop, it's, it's literally... hanging over us like a dark cloud. Everybody's frightened out of their minds. N not, I don't think anybody in this world thinks that everything is normal right now. And everybody in the world is like, what is about to happen? It's like we just know. I mean, they're talking about, like I said, it just passed this law. Trillions of dollars, which no one has. There's Nobody has this kind of money. That's why they put Biden in office because he's such an idiot. That, 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 that all these laws are passing, but we, nobody knows who's passing, who to blame. Well, we can't bl blame that old fart, you know, uh, that senile old man. We can't blame that old other old senile woman that's running the house that, you know, can't put her wig on straight. Who do we blame? Nobody's to, f to blame. We don't know. It's out of control. The government, we can't stop it. Oh, my gosh. We're all going to, you know be under some crazy new law tomorrow. And and everybody's like, stop this, but nobody can stop it. Now, there are men, Tucker Carlson called out all these Republicans that were on board for this. But here's the thing. A lot of this money, this trillions, isn't even about infrastructure. Like I say, why are we going to put infrastructure in when the, we're about ready? They know it. We're going through a reset and that People will not be here anymore because of what's about to happen. The great shaking, the wars and all this stuff. So what's the point of doing all this trillions of dollars? Just, it's like saying, you know what? We're going to bulldoze this house down. Why don't you spend trillions of dollars putting in new porcelain uh, sinks and tile and gold uh, plated toilet seats? Like panel it with gold and silver because, you know, we're going to destroy this house here in a minute. What's the point? Well, maybe they don't intend to destroy the world, but just get rid of a bunch of people. I don't know. But the other thing is, is that this, all this money, of course, is going to foreign governments. And there's other little provisions in this thing that's passing. One that says that you'll have no more rights. There are, you don't have any more property rights. Friends, this is happening right now. Right now, if you own property and you're renting it out and they don't pay the rent, you can't make them leave. So if you're paying the bank, it's already been over a year. I don't know how many months these people haven't been paying any rent. All of these people are losing 
their properties, their businesses, all of their wealth that was tied up in this, in this, uh, these, these places. And the banks, of course, the banks got to be paid, right? You got to pay the mortgage. The banks, they don't have to just suck it up. No, 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 no. They're too big to fail. But, okay, so we have these new laws and things that they're trying to pass through Congress. But some of these new draconian, dragon, uh -huh, draconian, hmm, I wonder why those words are related. Um, there's certain measures that are going around, in around the world, Australia, Canada, the United States, India, China, everywhere around the world. And they're not even being made into law by legislature or Congress or senators or presidents. Not even executive orders, really. The other day, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control or whatever that's called, they now literally, this one lady that used to be just some lady, I don't even know who, she's not elected, she's, I, I don't even know this lady who she is, but she gets up, she's the head of the CDC, and she just pronounces Voila, with her little wand, you know. And she doesn't even have to go through the cardinals or the bishops, you know, and vote on it. They just, she just, boom. She declared that you now don't own any property. The government owns everything and can dictate all of the property in the world. No one has any say. So she superseded the government. We don't have any government. The CDC is making the laws now, and and so that's crazy. But, you know, I was thinking about this. It seems like we're all sitting around, we hear this, and we think, how can they do this? That's not how laws are made. And yet we're all just abiding by all of this. Okay. And then it hit me, you know, like we were talking about the other day, Hey, this has been going on since, you know, there was the whole polio thing and the smallpox. And this has been going on for a long time. They, you know, there's been so many things they've been lying to us about. Let me show you how this has been going on from the very beginning. That everything we've ever done up to this point has been a complete conspiracy, a lie. We are all been free. For all this time, we never ever had to obey any of these governments. But mankind has never been able to receive that gift, that freedom, and grow up as mature adults and take the reign for themselves and live in unity and in brotherly love without having prisons and laws and propaganda running around in control. So the, re the ancient teachings, when Jesus came along and told us we were free, they didn't, they didn't like that. They didn't want you to know that you're free. They didn't want you to have knowledge to become like God. So way back when in the garden, they just cast us out and cursed us, right? And it seems like that's when this moon arrived. Okay, there was this great cataclysm. And after that, we have been under some very totalitarian rules. And, 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 and mankind, we didn't even know it. Just like today, you've got a lot of people that see these new restrictions and guidelines from the CDC and all this stuff. And we hear about the $3.5 trillion for infrastructure and paying off people in other countries and, and, and the restrictions and the Australian stuff. We're just like, well, what do you do? What can you do? Huh? What can you do? Just submit. All right. Well, they did that with religion. Remember, today we call it religion. Religion is like, ah, do it if you want to. Believe what you want. That kind of thing. Well, supposedly, you know, there's a separation of church and state. So, but people don't realize. They just switched one for another. 
we think, oh, goody, we're not under that totalitarian religion anymore. We can do what we want. Uh, wait a minute. No, you can't. We still have government. It's exactly the same thing. There never was such a thing as a religion. Religion, there was no religion. All oh, this is Judaism and Christianity and Buddhism. That never existed until the separation of church and state. Confucius was a government. The caste system wasn't in place because of some religious beliefs. It was enforced by law in India. And, you know, in Europe, they had inquisitions and the Pope gave edicts. It was the government. It wasn't some religion. It was the government. We still have government, guys. And they tell you what you can do, where you can build, and what you can breathe, and what you can eat, and what you must wear now. And if you can build there, or you can have that house. And then after you build your own house, and it's your own land, maybe it was handed down from your forefathers. But you still got to pay the government $100, $200, $300 a month. That's a lot of money. Taxes in Texas, I'm finding out, because I'm looking, you know. It's like $2,000 or more for a house. Depending on how much the house is worth. Like, if it's a real expensive house, it might be three or $4,000 for the year. Taxes. Do you know how much that is? That's several hundred dollars a month you pay to the government for nothing. They don't even fix the roads in these towns in Texas sometimes. There's potholes and everything. The, the water, um, city water has got rust in it. They don't fix it. Nothing. Well, now they're going to have in infrastructure, Dave. Well, <laughs> it's a little too late now. We're almost done. So there is no such thing as, this is ridiculous. We, we get so confused. We've always been under some sort of gauntlet, this law, and it started at some point. It was, according to Jesus, says, your father is the devil. He's a liar. He's a murderer. He's a slanderer. You're not sinners. Come and follow me. Come drink life's waters for free. I don't call you slaves. I call you my friends. A slave doesn't know what his master is doing. So Jesus said, my father's love and, and, you know, what kind of a deity you ask for bread and he gives you serpents? He says, I have compassion on the people. I love people. I want you to forgive and share and love and just as I love and give to you. But you see, they don't want that. So this whole system got started with the moon. And how did the moon get here? And what is the moon? That's what I want to tell you. That's what I want to discuss. Have you ever wondered about the moon. You know, there's some interesting facts that I want to share with you. Number one, it turns out that only Earth has a moon that is almost the size of the Earth itself. I mean, it's uh, the Earth is about 8,000 miles across and the moon is over 2,000 miles across. So it's about one quarter the size of the Earth. It's very large. But according, and so like if you go to Saturn or these other planets, their moons are much, much, much like 20 times smaller than, than the Earth. So it's an anomaly. The moon is much larger than any moon we've ever seen around, going around any other planet. There's a very, there's a bunch of strange things about the moon. One, they say it's very light. It should be much heavier. It's that big, right? The moon is just the right distance from the earth so that it has a tremendous effect upon the earth. Now, I will tell you why I believe the moon is in that position. I believe it was put there. It's not a natural thing. It's an unnatural, it's a satellite. And somebody put it there to monitor the earth. It's law. It's the all-seeing eye looking over us. It's Yahweh's commandments, his government. And I think that is why we never see the backside of the moon. They don't want you looking up there with your telescope and seeing what's going on. They've got bases up there. There's a command station up there. But here's some interesting facts. They, scientists are saying, now I don't know exactly how they know this, but they say that the moon is very light. 
much lighter than it ought to be. It's almost as if it's hollow. Okay, again, I don't know if we can prove that here. That's what people say. That's what the scientists are saying. They're also saying that the craters on the moon are very odd. They're not normal. They're, it's, there's something's wrong. Supposedly, and again, most of you won't believe this. I don't know that I believe it. Okay, I, most, I, I've said that I don't believe in the, the, the moon landing. However, I do think that they might have went to the moon. I do believe Yahweh's on the moon. I believe there are aliens' bases on the moon. So I don't have any real belief or reason to believe that we couldn't have gone to the moon. The, uh, there might be reasons we can't go to the moon. We don't know. We just don't know. However, I think that they staged it in Hollywood, this thing, you know, one small step for mankind, not because they couldn't go. Might be, but I think more likely because they don't want us to see what's on the moon. They don't want us to know what the moon is. That we're being controlled. That we're in uh, um, the Truman Show here. And here's some more evidence that we're in a created set on a stage. In a, some kind of a hologram or something that the moon may be projecting. Here's Here's some interesting information. I don't know if you've ever heard. but the, the, now Again, we don't know if this is true, but the government says that when they went there, they, did, they took some samples inside the craters. Did they or did they not? I don't know. But even if they didn't, it's strange what they're claiming. They're claiming that the moon cannot be penetrated. You can't dig down inside the craters into the core of the moon. That it is that the samples that they took says that the moon is made out of titanium and some other kind of metals like aluminum and stuff that are not natural but are man-made like infrastructure <laughs> we were talking about so the moon seems to be made not out of swiss cheese but titanium which is a light very strong metal that they use in the building of beams and structure if you've ever gone on to google moon and gone to the north pole of the moon, you'll see there seems to be a light coming from the North Pole there. There's lights coming from the Earth as well. We call it Aurora Borealis at the North and the South Poles. It's very odd. There's weird lines and there's a lot of weird things going on. One thing that's always been odd is that for, for, for mathematicians to understand is the coincidental reality that the moon is orbiting in such a place around the earth that we never see the backside. It doesn't rotate. Now, it's very, very rare for any satellite to not spin. Everything's spinning. Everything. This, everything's spinning. But the moon's not spinning. It's staying in exact lockstep as though it's hiding something on the backside. And when it goes in between the sun and the earth, when the moon goes between the sun and the earth, it literally blocks the sun out entirely. And you'll witness the fact that the moon is the exact, right down to the millimeter, the exact size of the sun. At least from its view from the earth. When you stand on the earth and look at the moon and you look at the sun, they're the exact same size. So like when you see the sun going down over the horizon or the moon at the horizon, they're always the same size and they're glowing red and stuff like that. You can see they're, you can tell they're about the same size, but when the eclipse happens, you'll see for certain that they're the exact same size. And I heard that the odds of that, along with some other little statistics, is one in a trillion for it to be natural. There are a lot of things that scientists say says cannot be natural with the moon. So, very interesting, and I and I think that it it's food for thought because there are a lot of things that the Bible tells us in ancient histor historical evidence that says that the moon wasn't always here. So as we said, the legends say that there was at one point this great dragon. Every esoteric ancient historical 
document in all the legends tell us in every country that there is some sort of dragon. And it doesn't take much research to find out that this dragon with its seven heads has something to do with the planets. Well, of course, the moon is one of the planets. The sun was one of the planets. Now, we don't call the sun a planet today. But in those days, the seven planets included the sun, the moon, and Mercury and Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Well, in the ancient story, if you've ever read Van Daniken or, well, I think Valenkowski covers it a lot better, they, they go over these ancient legends and talk about how something occurred where there was some planets that collided or something. And in this great collision of the dragon in this wrath, after it was all over, the earth had been turned upside down or there was a great cataclysm on earth. It's a known, it's an event that all the world remembers. And it was a, a particular crisis moment in the history of man where history pivots. And there's the time before the moon and there's the time after the moon was put here. Like I said, in many cultures it's considered some sort, something like an egg or an, an all-seeing eye looking over us. And from this point forward, it talks about the gods going underground. We've talked about the tunnels and all of this. So they have a base on the moon where they watch us and then they have bases under the ground, under our infrastructure. Now, if we find out that the moon is a manufactured uh, titanium satellite, then what's to prevent the Earth from being also a manufactured Truman Show stage. I don't know. But I want to show you something. There's a, Well, there's a lot of stuff that I don't even think we're going to go into all the little details. But there's a lot of math that scientists can't figure out. The distance between the sun and the moon and all these different mathematical uh, synchronicities that just don't make any sense. But let me show you a little verse in the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah chapter 13, starting with verse 1, it says this, a judgment against Babylon. Now remember, that's what the book of Revelation is talking about, the fall of Babylon. And uh, the shaking is the mountains falling and the stars falling. We'll find that the stars represent the gods. They go crazy. They fall. And their moon turns into blood. It's like the end of the age and a great cataclysm. And there's a star that falls from heaven. All this is talked about in the book of Revelation. Well, here in Isaiah chapter 13, it says, The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, son of Amoz, did see. Lift up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go in to the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. That's set apart kind of like the elect. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger. This is Yahweh's elect or his people that he's gathering because he, he's got anger, wrath. Even them that rejoice in my highness. Oh, your highness. Well, I didn't know you were, you were honorable. Now that you've got that, that little title of honorable magistrate, I guess I'll bow down to you and do everything you say. Not well, it says the noise of a multitude in the mountains. Is that like the great multitude in the wilderness? I don't know. Like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of kingdoms, of nations gathered together. And Yahweh of armies mustereth up the armies of battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Even Yahweh and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole... Now, it says land here, but that word in the Hebrew, it just means the earth. To destroy the whole earth. And we know it's the whole earth because over and over here in Isaiah, it talks about every nation, you know, the whole earth going to turn upside down and moved out of its place. We'll, we'll get to that. 
Verse 6, Howl ye, for the day of Yahweh is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, now, Yahweh calls himself the Almighty, but we know he's not. Therefore, shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. Friends, this is the feeling I'm getting right now. If I didn't understand that I can put my fears upon the Lord, that I don't need to have anxiety or worry because he loves us. And that is what, as Christians, the only thing that's going to help us is our faith. And the only way you can have faith is through self-knowledge, through awakening, through learning. So it's very important that we understand. Because I know people right now, friends, that are getting divorces. I know people that are, you know, they, they're not allowed to see their family anymore because they didn't get the, you know, you know, they didn't get the, they're not complying. And, and they're ostracized and they're losing their jobs, their livelihoods. There's people on the street, people losing all of their business and all their money. It's a very interesting thing. I now believe that this entire crypto thing may have been a scam, as the president has said, Donald Trump said, because a lot of people have put a lot of money in there and then they just and then they end up just losing it. And we don't know what the result of all of that's going to be, but it's manipulated. You lose money just like that. And Elon Musk makes a tweet and it's gone. This is crazy. That's not a way to to deal with finances and people's thousands and millions of dollars, putting it into some, you know, what's not gold, it's not uh, a bank vault, it's just crypto in the air, and oh, you got it, and now you don't. And it says, and they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. Oh, my friends, that's what's happening right now. But the pain and the sorrow is because of what we see coming upon the earth. It hadn't even happened yet. We're just in that stage of scary, scary anticipation and not knowing. Well, we need to know. We need to have faith. We need to have absolute knowledge is what really is going on. It says, They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. We just talked about that. The woman's going to travail and give birth to the Christ. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh. Cruel! You people who believe in Yahweh, who worship Him, do you know that He's cruel? Do you know that He hates you? That He swore in His wrath, you will not enter into His rest and He will not pardon your sins unto the third and to the fourth generation? Did you know that His name was Jealous? And do you know that our Father is love and that there is no jealousy in love according to the Apostle Paul in verse chapter 13, 1 Corinthians 13. So Yahweh comes with cruel, with wrath and fierce anger to lay the earth desolate. And no, really? The whole earth desolate? Wasn't that what the book of Revelation says that all these people are going to die? Um, uh, first a third of men and then a third of the trees and the water turning to blood and the stars fall. Yeah. Look at this. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Who are the sinners? Those who partake of his wrath because he, they didn't do his will. Because remember the law is a bondage and a curse. And because of it there's coming wrath. But we who are in Christ there is no condemnation and we're not appointed under the wrath. Then it says in verse 10, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. I wonder what that's going to be like. The sun will not, shall be darkened in going forth. And the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world. Yahweh says, I'm going to punish the world, not the sinners. Now he, now he fesses up and just admits it. He's going to punish the world. He's been monitoring us up there in the moon, right? For a long time. Now his wrath has come. It's turned to blood. 
I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Who, who are the proud that he's talking about? Well, Isaiah chapter 53, the same book here, tells you that he delighted in crushing Jesus. And he said in Isaiah chapter 14, which is the next chapter, which is really what this has to do with, why he's doing this. Yahweh says of the light, right? The son of the morning, Christ, the book of Revelation says that Jesus is the son of the morning, the morning star. And he says, you wanted to be like God, right? You think you're like God, you blasphemer. You broke my law. I condemn you, Jesus, and I'm going to send you to hell and I'm going to torture you. So evidently Yahweh thinks that Jesus is proud and, and, and you and I, we have no right to become like God and have knowledge and do of our own free will. So in verse 12 he says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. You know how hard it is to go out and find gold? It's hard. It's hard to find it. You got to search for it. <laughs> Work hard to find some gold. It's precious. Well, Human beings, very shortly, it's going to be very difficult to even find a human being on this earth because they're all going to be gone. And it says, the earth shall be removed out of her place. Now, why would that happen? Why would the earth be moved out of its place? Well, it's reminiscent of that great cataclysm when the moon got here, when the great war of the dragon, and she left her little pod here to watch over us. And when that moon came, moon came into the, you know, obviously the planets are bouncing around and big, you know, some sort of smashing in, you know, there's big craters on the moon. Some say those are due to the moon getting battered around and, or, or I don't know. Or was it just a satellite built out of titanium? I don't know. But it says, in the wrath of Yahweh, of armies, the Lord of war, and in the day of his fierce anger, and it shall be as the chased roe, you know, like a little deer who's running away, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. Huh, this is worded so differently that we don't really understand it. It means that, you know, when you startle a deer and they run, or a little sheep wandering around with nowhere to go, no home, that's what the humans that's left on the earth are going to be like, like a, like a little fawn that has no mother, like a little sheep wandering around with no place to go. They shall, every man turn to his own people and they'll flee everyone to his own land. So, you know, at that point, people are going to be trying to go home, see if they can find their families, but there's not going to be any family left. And it says that everyone that is still found on the earth at this point shall be thrust through and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So you'll be running around trying to go home and, 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 and being chased down by somebody who's trying to kill you. This is what, Mad Max. You ever seen the movie? It says their children also shall be dashed to pieces. What kind of nastiness is this? What kind of a disgusting, filthy talk is this. It comes from your holy Bible. It's the truth. How else can you be warned? How else will you know what's about to happen? And yet, even though it's said right there, it's been there for a long time. People have read this. Nobody's paying attention. People still out there worshiping this deity. You can't please him. They're babies are going to be dashed to pieces before their eyes. This is coming. Their houses shall be spoiled. I just told you that the government of the United States has just declared that you have no property. It's coming. And their wives are going to be ravished. That means raped. And I don't think I got to tell you, it means your children will be raped as well. It's happening. Oh, but see, it hasn't happened to us, so it's not happening. No, it's happening to the poor little Mexican children right now and the people in Bangladesh 
and India and Africa and China. It's been happening. And this deity is ruthless and his law is evil. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. Who's that? Well, that's probably what we would say Afghanistan and Iran, that area. Which shall not regard silver. As for gold, they shall not delight in gold. Their bows, oh, a bull for war? Is that the word, like in Revelation 6 too? Toxin? Biological? Warfare? Also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare the children. Friends, they're not going to spare your children. And Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, he's done it before. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satires shall dance there. Most people believe that means demons. The demons will live there. The snakes that are in the rocks and the jackals it talks about. Weird animals that have characters and natures that are demonic. That were all created by the devil. And if you don't believe that, you sit right here where I'm at right now and watch one of these little bugs. They'll go right straight to your face and right up your nose. They know how to get in. They are kamikaze Creatures created by the devil. Do you know that bugs and insects are not mentioned in Genesis chapter 1? They did not, our Father in heaven did not make bugs and insects and spiders. They're not mentioned in Genesis 1. But Yahweh in chapter 2, he's the one who makes these crazy little wicked evil things. And the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses and the dragons in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come and her days shall not be prolonged. All right, so we see that the earth's going to be moved out of its place. Now, I don't know what you can conjure up in your mind as a fulfillment of that. Remember, anything that's going to be symbolic has got to have some sort of reality in, ba in, in, in fact, some basis in reality. We've got to have some, you can't just say, uh, oh, well, uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a seed. Well, only if a seed is real and actually seeds do that. And then the kingdom of heaven can be like that. So when we're talking about uh, the earth being moved out of its place, okay, that has to be some kind of reality, or it just means nothing to speak of it. And it's too many times in the Bible, over and over and over again, that this is what we've been told, we've been warned. Why would you be warned about something symbolic that doesn't even mean nothing? No, this is real. What really means something is that our home, the place where we live, is being ruled over by evil, and people are going to die, and these wars are real. And it says that the earth will be moved out of, out of its place, the sun shall be darkened. Remember when Jesus died, the sun was darkened? It was dark. It happens. So, now you understand when Jesus said, okay, there's going to be war, and well, Antichrist, war, famine, pestilence, and then earthquakes. No, 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 not just earthquakes. A whole shaking of the earth. The earth will be shaken and moved out of its place. That's what Jesus was talking about. The stars will be falling. The mountains will be falling. And a star shall fall from heaven and fall into the sea and the dirt of the water shall be turned to blood. What the heck does this mean? Well, up out of the bottomless pit comes his little armies of devils. And they'll be thrusting you through with a sword and hunting you down and killing you. Why? You say, Dave, this is crazy. Stop, stop. You're scaring me. Come on now. Don't. Uh, you're, you're just fear mongering. No, I'm telling you the truth. I'm warning you. You need to be careful. 
Because this is unacceptable. We can't go through this. I don't want you to go through it either. I don't want anyone to go through this. And this is why I'm telling you. Because there's a way that you don't have to go through it. Remember, there is no condemnation in us who walk after Christ. We are not appointed under the wrath. And remember that little group of people that's in the mountains, right? They're gathered out. Okay, we're the ones who are gathered by our Father in heaven. We're sealed in the forehead with the seal of the living deity. And we have divine protection. And not one hair of our heads will be harmed. But you must heed the words of Jesus. He said, Upon this people, wrath upon this people, he said. Use your imagination to know what people that might be. But for us, who follow the Lord, We're not appointed under this wrath. And the demons can't harm us. The problem for us is going to be seeing our families because there will be father against brother and mother against son and all of this stuff going on. They're stirring this up right now. So I would suggest for all of you out there, make sure you sit down with your family right now and show them this video or read them these scriptures and help them understand get their head on straight. Give them knowledge so they know what to do. Knowledge gives faith. The more you know, the more you can understand and do something about it. We need to have love. Don't go out and start beating your fellow servants because then you, he will come in an hour in which you know not. But we're not going to be surprised by this. We have knowledge, brethren, the Apostle Paul says, for this to not take us as a thief in the middle of the night. We're not going to be hunted down like cockroaches. Okay, because we have faith in the Lord. And it says they'll take us before kings. Yes, we're going to be taken to jails and probably concentration camps. But be calm. Not one hair of your head will be harmed. Whoever endures unto the end, the same shall be delivered from the wrath that is to come. I'm going to go ahead and go, guys. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.